What is up, everybody? Welcome to Waypoint Wednesdays, edition number five. We're back from vacation and ready to go. Uh, so let's see, what do we got going on? A uh, couple things going on to my left or this way. I'm now looking at the behind the scenes camera uh, on Instagram Live. Andy Kirker in the house, Promoto Rally. Seeing, uh, been seeing the news. We're getting that going. So excited to see that. And then uh, our main camera over here, which you guys can't see, is uh, our main YouTube camera. So if you're on and watching on the Waypoint Wednesdays behind the scenes on Instagram, uh, jump over to YouTube, search Chasing Waypoints, uh, or go back a story, and you'll be able to find the link to get in and uh, and check it out. And so that you'll be on uh, on this side. Billy Trap is in the house. What is up, bud? So let's see here. Let me move this a little bit here. We will be taking attendance for those of you playing the home game. Welcome, sir. You ready for Kota rally or what? So let's get started. A lot going on. Dave Black is in. Dave, did you get? Did you hear the music? I know you had to have heard the music. I hope you heard the music. Had a little bit of that old nightclub vibe going. So, oh, uh, watch out. Here's trouble. American Rally Originals. So that's either going to be Dave Pearson, Kyle McCoy, uh, geez, Paul Neff. Uh, let's see, who else could that be? Mo Hart. A bunch of different people that could be that. Let's see. Uh-oh. We got somebody from Baja. Baja Rockstar 450 on the behind the scenes camera on Instagram. Yeah, checking it out. So I am excited. Big box of parts. Oh, you guys can see it on the YouTube camera. Uh-huh. Awesome. So... Back from vacation, if you guys heard, uh, we had the Chasing Waypoints podcast. It was a little bit late. Sorry, voice. Everything was kind of getting back uh, back into shape so we could uh, talk and get into it. Ooh, new bike for Kota. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that is, that is going to be coming up. That is now the next... Uh, <laughs> of course, we may never know. Um, so yeah, Kota Rally now going to be leading the group out. We thought it was going to be Sonora Rally, and then they ended up changing the calendar around a little bit uh moving that all the way over all the way back to the other side uh of baja rally so uh the last of the chasing waypoints challenge uh which if you guys haven't heard there is a video on the instagram about it uh, i'll talk about that in a second or if not i talked a lot about it yesterday in the podcast definitely want to check that out uh and see uh find out a little bit more about it but uh basically it's a three rally series kota baja rally six day and uh the sonora rally and it's basically a gentleman's bed but it's in support of none other than the american rally originals so uh they're tuned in and checking it out uh so i hope um you guys get a chance to check the video out or ask some questions about it but basically uh tallying some points participate in at least two of the three rallies uh and we'll see who comes out on top we've already got uh matthew from rally moto shop that's stepped up on it and is uh giving out a gift certificate uh to the winner of the challenge uh and i am working with other com or other companies um to see if we can get some more uh, prizes and you know kind of sweeten up the pot a little bit so looking for that one. Oh, look at that hey uh Dave, I've got you in stereo. You're in YouTube and you're on Instagram. So uh, for those of you on YouTube, we are doing an Instagram feed. That's the behind the scenes. So I'll be paying attention to you guys, but Instagram's here too. So uh, checking that out. Uh, and yes, Mike has a great event ahead for Kota. Uh, I got to check in with him, but he was right back on the bike and I'm, I'm stoked to see that, you know, right back to work, uh, getting ready for this year's edition of it. So I'm definitely looking forward to, uh, finding out a little bit more about what he's got in store for the guys this or the teams this year. Um, remember Kota rally is more of a Malimoto style. So it's some Iron Man stuff. You got to put the big boy pants on for that one. Um, but but really really cool uh yeah that is a lot of rally days in two months agreed it's gonna be uh it's gonna be tough so we've officially if you guys heard the podcast yesterday um that went up if not uh chasing waypoints podcast you can search it on any of your podcasts i don't want this to sound like a commercial but um anyway i was talking about that and officially just like uh, some of the other manufacturers have their truck month 
uh, we're officially going to have our rally month. So uh, rally month is going to be October. You've got Baja rally, you've got the rally du Maroc, and you have the Sonora rally all happening in the month of October. So a lot of rallies going on just in that month. Uh, I'll do my best to keep up. We do have the Abu Dhabi challenge coming up in about nine days. Um, so I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to get a feel for how they're doing their tracking and the scoring and all that and how the website works. Uh, but I would love, and the plan right now is to basically do a, the same thing we did with Dakar. So every night, because it is, uh, basically 12 hours apart. So every night while they're asleep, we'll get a chance to talk a little bit about the upcoming st stages the results from the previous stages and we'll do that. So if you aren't already subscribed to the chasing waypoints podcast, you're going to want to be on there. And then, uh, we'll see about, uh, doing a waypoint Wednesdays, uh, based on, uh, what's going on there with the, uh, Abu Dhabi desert challenge. So absolutely excited to see that and, and getting it going. Uh, let's see here. And I heard they will use rally comps. Yeah, I think, uh, I got to talk to, I got to talk to the Mikes, um, in the rally world, Mike is a very popular name, uh, for those of you that do not know this. Um, but one of the Mikes I've got to talk to, and then I got to talk to one of the other Mikes, uh, to see if both Mikes will make it to that Mike's rally. So, uh, we'll see everybody confused yet. Um, so yeah, so let's see, what are we doing today first? Well, first of all, we've got some stuff to unbox from them. Rottweiler they're doing their bike night tonight so I don't expect uh, those guys those guys are busy um, but uh, we were up there on our way back from uh, on our way back from vacation we stopped by the Rottweiler facility checked it out got a tour got to meet scratch the KTM squirrel uh, and also um, just you know chat with Chris about rally stuff and and what was going on and uh, got to Google and Google at the, uh, the 790 rally bike, which is absolutely awesome. And I happen to have a part that may or may not bolt to the back of it, uh, here with us in the, uh, adventure taco studios. Uh, so let's see and check in the chat here. Yeah. It looks like, uh, Dave. Yeah. You guys did use them. Um, that was actually kind of cool. Um, I reached out to, uh, rally comp, uh, several weeks before the event and was asking him what was happening on that. And, and uh, he had kind of lost track. Um, Mike, the guy at uh, Rally Comp, the creator of the Rally Comp, is extremely busy all the time. I don't know how he does it, but um, he makes things happen. And um, so we got the, the two mics connected. And uh, next thing you know, we had Rally Comps at the Kota Rally. So that was super awesome to see that. Uh, super great, the tracking and everything and being able to use that. So uh, I'm absolutely stoked uh, that that connection was made and that uh, that all went very, very well. So I've heard no bad news whatsoever from the Kota Rally, which is pretty cool. Even on the off-channel stuff, the stuff that, you know, they asked me not to repeat and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I can say that, uh, that has been pretty good. So, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see that, uh, continue to grow. Uh, and then also, I don't think he's on, but, uh, I know, uh, let's see who else we got here. Jacob, are you bright? What's up buddy? And then park city adventure. Park city. Mike, aren't you in somewhere else in the other part of the world right now? Uh, I'm glad you're here. Um, I, how's the rally going? That's what we want to know. Um, so yeah, so where was I? I don't know. So yeah, so we got a bunch of rally stuff coming up. Remember October is rally month for North America for all of us rally nuts right before it's, it's think of it as a primer for the Dakar rally and the hangover that ensues after the Dar Dakar rally is done and over with. So, um, I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, what happens on that one, uh, for us, but, but yeah, um, let's see. What do we got going? Project 501. Got a lot of stuff going on there. Got some more parts coming. Uh, was down at San Diego BMW Motorcycles today. We were talking handlebars. Uh, one of my guys at work uh, turned me on to the uh, Pro Taper bars that just came out. Um, the carbon fiber uh, wound ACF, I believe it is, uh, with a little bit more room for controls and stuff like that. And they're designed to absorb vibrations a little bit better. So he turned me on to those. So can't wait to get those. Got two sets coming. Uh, so one for each bike. Uh, so looking forward to see how those those work. Try them out. You know, give them a shot. You know, see what happens. Uh, I am going to say I do have a set of flex bars on Project 501. That's how I was equipped when I got it. Um, but 
I'm, I'm, lo I'm loyal to those. I like them. I've got them. I, from previously running them on my F 800, I was able to figure out how to get them to work, um, with the help of a uh, coal up there at fast, uh, fast company and just dialing them in. And, and I, I, I like the bars. Some people don't like them. They say it kind of feels weird that they flex out of the way and that they move, uh, which I could get that, but they have different rubber bushings and elastomers that you can do to, to tune them to what you like. So, uh, I even got the, uh, the torque wrench out, went down to Newton meters and made sure we got those, uh, got those correct and handled. So, so yeah, uh, let's see, what do we got going on here? Okay. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, I am working on a project. Um, let me rewind a little bit. So I was talking to Matthew Glade and we've got, uh, we got some stuff coming from him. Unfortunately, DHL decided that they wanted to hold on to the package a little bit longer than necessary. Uh, and it was supposed to be here today and we were going to do an unboxing, but, uh, unfortunately we were not able to get that box because it's still in Cincinnati, Ohio at the time of recording this live at 727 ish. Um, so unfortunately that's not going to happen for this one, but we will do the unboxing of what we've got coming, but I was talking to him and we are working on something. Uh, I'm already, uh, started designing, getting close to starting to print some cases and stuff like that, but Look at all the fingerprints already. God, it's so horrible. Um, okay, so this is a Gal Galaxy Tab Active 3 uh, that we were able to get a hold of um, and going to try this digital roadbook thing out. Now, Carpet Eater and a couple of other companies are doing their own deal, but I'm going to be using Drive Mode Dashboard uh, and then also using the Rally Navigator app uh, on it as well. So didn't go hog wild. I looked for something that would work, a tablet that would just get the job done. Uh, I'm not planning on really hammering on this thing, but it's to help design something that I'm working on for switches. And then also to be able to try it out. Let's try this electronic roadbook thing. Uh, for those of you who've been keeping up, uh, I have mentioned a couple of times already that we are uh, working on an adventure raid series where we're going to be doing stuff for bigger adventure bikes. That's going to be more like a dual sport type deal. So there'll be navigation on, uh, on roads and then also country roads. And then also there's going to be some fire roads involved with that. So, uh, we're getting really close on launch, launching more of that stuff and getting it going. So, uh, looking forward to, to releasing some more information and getting it on the uh, website. So you guys can check it out. And those that uh, can make it out to San Diego for these events, uh, I'm planning on three events in the Southern California area. Uh, but for those of you that can make it out, it's going to be awesome. So uh, look for more uh, to come on that one uh, on that front. But yeah, so that's what this thing is is for. Uh, so let's see here. Martin Gomi, what is happening, sir? Ransburg. I got to get up there again. Check that place out again. Go do some riding. Gnarly Dave knows the uh, the routes around there, so looking forward to doing some of that stuff there. And uh, maybe talking to you about uh, doing one of the rally uh, events that we're talking about there. So let's see. What did Martin go? Let's okay. We're gonna switch to the behind the scenes camera over on Instagram. Let's see what's uh, going on here. Martin Gomi coming on live here. Oh, declined. Okay, he probably hit the button by accident, but not a big deal. Uh, Martin talking about uh, an adventure raid series and some rallies out there. Yes, that's what I want. That is what I wanted to read. So, uh, yeah, I'll I'll hit you up. We'll be talking to it. Uh, Gnarly Dave also uh, letting him know so we can get uh, get that involved and we can get uh, something going. So, all right, what do we unbox first? I want to unbox. Let's let's do the box first. So yeah, so we got parts coming from. Uh, from rally moto shop but like i said dhl decided to hold on to it uh, a little bit longer than necessary uh, so we'll have to go with the stuff that we picked up from rottweiler and this was kind of a last minute deal um but chris was able to pull it all together and the guys at rottweiler so i was pretty stoked on that um all right let's do this without knocking it over Look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yes. First thing you see when you open this thing. Very nice. Got some instructions there. And uh, let's see. You hold in your hands one of the, our most bespoke product creations to date. 
blending every design aspect into a sculpture as beautifully crafted as it is functional. It is our sincere desire that our collect passion for design and development will culminate into only the best experiences for our customers wherever they may roam chris parker so pretty cool it's a great detail there looks uh oh, yeah and signed yeah this is going up on the wall this is going in the garage right there so all right let's see so let's set that over there all right first and foremost ah yes uh okay so we're opening the box um, this is one of the first things that we're finding out of there. It's out of view of the camera. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the behind the scenes camera here on Instagram, but, uh, this is what we're looking at. Uh, if you go back one story, click on the link for YouTube or just open up your YouTube app. You can join in on the chasing waypoints, uh, YouTube channel, uh, and see the main camera over here. But, uh, basically I'll, I'll kind of sneak it in, but this is, uh, part of what we got. <clears throat> coming in the box we got the second part second part so let's get rid of this and let's take the knife to it and very carefully because I'll be the guy that probably scratches this this part I'm trying to open it too fast <clears throat> Trying to guess. All right. Look at this. So sh fancy. All right. There it is. This piece of jewelry. So this is the Rottweiler 790 KTM 790 triple clamp set uh, that they just came out with. Uh, this is in the hard anodized thing. And, um, I worked in a machine shop for a while. We did transmission parts and stuff like that and had a chance to work around a lot of this stuff and know kind of uh, what to to look at machining wise and all of that stuff. And initial, look at that, even the alignment tool for fork alignment, very nice. Okay, all right. All right, so let's see, what do we got here? Yeah, I'm like looking at it and I mean, there's like everything is like machine real nice. You've got the uh, Teflon coating on it. I got the Teflon or hard anodized uh, coating. Didn't want to go for the uh, the orange stuff. There's enough orange stuff on the bike uh, already. Uh, but this is for the KTM 790, 890 uh, bikes. And yeah, so this, this version is the one that has the lift or the blocks already integrated. And then it also comes with the uh, Scott's steering mount uh, already set up uh, into it. Uh, didn't go with the full send titanium bolts. Uh, it's not a race bike. Uh, it is ridden as such. Uh, really cool. Got the brass, uh, brass end stop bolts down here. Here, I'll share with both cameras. Got the uh, brass end stop bolts down here also. Uh, to, so you can set up your steering, like how far you're going to be, uh, going lock to lock, uh, something that I liked and actually looks kind of cool and adds a lot to it is, uh, this right here. So you've got a set of two different, uh, mounting holes. So you can do the stock, uh, the stock front fender, uh, or you can do the, uh, the rally type fender, which is a little bit smaller, a little shorter and a little bit higher up. Uh, so I'm going to be, I'm going to run that one cause, uh, it looks pretty aggressive. And so what started this party uh, was actually something that we were working on. Um, I had seen the spy shots and I had seen a very raw prototype of this, which already looked like the finished product anyway. Um, and I had decided, so I was working with or talking to uh, Travis from every single Sunday and we were just talking about like basic bike stuff that he does to a new bike. And we were talking about, you know, the, the swing arm bearings and the, the wheel bearings and then steering head bearings and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, well, um, let's dive into it. And, and I want to know, like, for those of you playing the home game, like, what are your rituals, right? Comment below. What are the things that you do when you get a new bike? Uh, what, what kind of things do you check over? What do you do? I mean, do you trust the people that assembled it or, no, I trust no man and I'm going to do my, my own thing. 
Um, so anyway, so that got the party started and I was like, you know, I'm going to go, you know, all right, cool. We're going to open this thing up and, and, uh, grease the bearings and stuff like that. And so I went after the steering head bearings and, uh, I've seen some different steering head bearings, mainly on the BMW side of things, but the vast majority of bikes are in fact, tapered roller bearings. And then, uh, I open it up and to my surprise, there is like some straight up, um, some straight up bicycle headset bearings. And I told Chris jokingly at Rottweiler, it's like, dude, you should put your mountain bike and the 790 next to each other and ask people to guess what they have in common and that bearing. And I'm not, don't take it like I'm bashing the KTM engineers because they, I'm sure thought that out very, very well. Um, but it's just very strange to me to see such a small bearing at the steering head, uh, at, at the front tube of this thing. So I was like, okay, we need to, uh, we need to revisit this. So I sent some pictures out. I sent some pictures to Travis at every single Sunday. I'm like, dude, look what I just pulled out of this thing. And we were kind of in shock, but you know, understanding that, Hey, you know, KTM knows what they're doing, you know? So I was like, it would be cool if there was a tapered bearing, uh, in on this. And after a short conversation with Chris and told him what I found and he said, uh, yeah, hold that thought. And it was already in the works. So, uh, yeah, so that was the big thing. I, when we were talking about it, I told Chris, you know, to me, the biggest deal is, uh, the tapered roller bearings, um, and going with that. And that's just because, um, so for you, those of you that don't, um, may not know this, um, like the front bearings on your dirt bike or rear bearings are technic or usually like a roller bearing or a ball bearing. Um, the main difference with that is, is that on those types of bearings, you're usually just looking at a radial load. So in other words, you're just spinning this thing, you know, in one direction and that's it. You don't have to worry about, uh, side impacts, or you don't have to worry about like, you know, pushing forces, things like that. It's very different. It's a very different load that those bearings experience. So you could get away with that, you know, ball bearings in a wheel. That's, that's perfectly normal. Now the tapered bearing where that comes in is that these bearings can be loaded in both directions better. They can have a thrust load. So pushing into each other and you can also have a radial load. Uh, so that's the cool part about, uh, having these bearings on your steering head because the majority of the work, if you think about it, well, yeah, it's, you know, you're turning, you're spinning the bearing in this direction, right? This is how it mounts in the bike. And you're basically just turning your handlebars back and forth. Well, that's only so much of the movement. Then you have these forks, these long leveraged pieces trying to basically twist the bearing, twist the bearing. You have one, you have one at the top, one at the bottom. And this thing is trying to do this as the suspension flexes. So having, you know, we'll, we'll show it over here, but basically it's, you know, these things are loading in such a way where they're, the fork goes and it tries to bend. And so now you're putting a thrust load on a bearing that's m m for the most part designed to carry a radial load. So this is the answer to both. So the only thing with these is that they do require a certain amount of preload to get them to stay where they need to be and not groove. Um, and then another one is, is like, actually here's, here's a good one. So if you're buying a used bike or if you have your bike and you haven't checked them in a while, uh, go out to the garage, pick the front tire up off the ground, turn the stabilizer off or remove the stabilizer and turn the, the bars slowly and see if you can feel a notch that notch happens because of that movement where it's hammering it. And usually what happens is, is that the top bearing it's at the back. So closest to you when you're sitting on the bike and on the bottom bearing, the notch is at the front uh, of the bearing, where is where that's where it pulls away. So it kind of does that motion. And so it flat spots the bearing uh, later on, you get handling stuff, usually more prevalent on road bikes or adventure motorcycles. You'll feel it more because the bike just doesn't seem to turn in. The problem with it is, is that most motorcycle owners, if you don't check it, it's a slow burn, meaning it happens so gradually that you don't actually even know it's doing it if you don't check it. So uh, this is your reminder 
to check your steering head bearings and always make sure that they're properly torqued. Uh, come up with your service interval or look at the uh, look at the books and do it. It's usually a pretty quick check. Uh, something that I already spotted on this that I really liked um, is let me put this back in its baggy, all nice and neat. Uh, but one thing that I like that uh, Chris and Rottweiler did is they actually have put uh, the torque specs etched on this. So it's really cool. That'll give it a chance to uh, remind me what they need to be. But 18 Newton meters there, 20 Newton meters here. Uh, I believe these are 17 and 12s. I'll look at the instructions, but we'll be able to find that uh, pretty quickly. Uh, but yeah, so super stoked about that um, to do it. But I hope that um, that you guys, if you guys are riding 790s uh, or the new Norton uh, 901s, uh, or any other basically uh, dirt bike, check your steering head bearings. Uh, the bike will feel different, especially if you haven't checked it, they're flat spotted and then you change them. Uh, you should you should notice the difference, especially if it's a road going bike. So, so yeah. So looking forward to getting this thing installed. It is, it does, it does feel lighter than the others. So uh, I know that also affects how the bike handles. Uh, oh, here it is. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, 12 Newton meters. He's got the uh, he's got the studs etched there, twelve and fifteen newton meters. It's like, oh, this thing is just rad. So can't wait to get that on the uh, get that on the seven ninety. So I don't know what you guys. Uh, what was your favorite part of your bike build? Uh, was there a particular part that you were excited to put on the bike? Uh, comment below or uh, send a comment. Oh, there's somebody I haven't talked to in a while. Seven racer, Vic. What is going on, sir? You're on the Instagram behind the scenes camera, but I see you. Um, do you still have your 790? Or are we Polaris Razors now? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so the next part I'm pretty excited about. I hope I don't get in trouble for showing this on camera, but I think the uh, idea was to try and get up. What up, sir? Uh, is none other than, all right, still have the 790. Nice. I got, we're getting new toys for the, uh, for the 790. So, uh, I, I know we were talking about, uh, rally towers a while back ago about the raid garage stuff. Raid just released a new kit for the narrower tanks. Uh, we've got that coming. So check out their website. Uh, they got some really cool stuff going on. Uh, speaking of tanks, um, let's see if I don't drop this. So for those of you on YouTube, you'll probably see it first uh, and then I'll bring it over to the Instagrams. But this is the official, well, no, not official. I should say this is the prototype of the Rottweiler 790, 890 uh, rear fuel tank. So this actually really, really cool. Uh, will capture, captures in between the rear frames, uh, your left and right frame. Uh, you have like a super trick gas cap uh, for it all your breather lines, all that stuff, single petcock over on the side that feeds the other part, uh, the front tanks uh, directly at the crossover line. Um, it's meant to bolt up to uh, the Rottweiler intake system. Um, yeah, this thing is badass. And so the big thing for me on this one was I wasn't really sure how much gas we were gonna gain on this, but right now uh, it looks like it's gonna be just over a gallon and a half of extra fuel uh, on, uh, on that, uh, 790, So if you're riding them in a very spirited manner in the dirt, uh, they do tend to go through gas fairly quickly. If you tune them, they go through gas even a little quicker, but they run a lot meaner. Um, but yeah, so this is one of the, uh, one of the first revisions of the tank. So we're looking to get that installed along with the raid kit. Uh, the new raid garage, uh, tank kit actually has two um, has two smaller tanks up front and then a storage compartment in the middle. Um, so you're gonna lose about a half a gallon worth of fuel, but it narrows the bike about five inches, but then it also saves you, I think it was something like four or five pounds as well uh, with integrated radiator guards and all of this stuff. So anyway, we'll, once that gets, gets here, we'll do the uh, unboxing on that one. But the big thing was is, well, you're losing half a gallon of range. Well. With this one, 
um, we're able to gain that half gallon back and get an extra gallon of fuel, which uh, if you do your math correctly and you do everything the way it needs to be, then you should be okay. But uh, but yeah, so looking forward to plumbing this thing in and getting it going um, and doing that. So uh, 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 let's see. Sick. My bro Merlin's by Baja had all the right. Oh, man. OK, so it looks like we got some uh, some stuff to look at there. That's a bummer. I didn't know that his bike lost a uh, lost an engine on it. Um, well, uh, hopefully they can get to the bottom of it, figure out what went uh, what went sideways on it. Um, I'm about to take mine apart uh, when I start doing this. I got the uh, oil jet um, for the clutch uh, and then I also got a set of the uh, heavier springs, which uh, I think the kit I got uh, Vic comes with six springs. I only need three of them. So let me know. I'll meet up with you and I'll give you the other three. Uh, it just makes the clutch a little bit uh, stiffer. It, it gives the it's just basically a stiffer clutch spring. So should help a little bit there but yeah so for those of you that are watching youtube uh you saw it first but this is the rottweiler uh rear tank 1.6 gallons uh fits in between the frame rails that's those crevices that you see there it's designed to be captured uh between the two rear frame rails it's got the stuff for routing the wires and everything like that so this thing was super well thought out and like i said it's got about a little over a gallon and a half of fuel capacity on it um so absolutely excited uh they are working on getting them stateside i know they're still uh finishing up the production and getting them coming so uh they're going to be available uh shortly from rottweiler performance so yeah so let's put that away that's enough show and tell for that one um but yeah so that's what we've got uh what we've got going on uh project 501 uh we've got some stuff coming from rally moto shop uh, we're working on getting the rest of the bike built up uh, I'm learning how things need to go in a certain order. Like say, for instance, a radiator hose goes on after you remove the exhaust, not before. Um, yeah. Or maybe you put it on before you put the radiator on. So you have more wiggle room. I don't know. I totally hose that one, but you know, living and learning. Uh, the cool part is, is like anything else. And we know this and, and, uh, seven racer Vic is, uh, Longtime Baja racer and uh, and all over the place too, Nevada, Arizona, all that stuff. He's raced everything. Um, knows this as well. You know, you got to know your car inside and out because usually it's the things that you don't know that leave you stranded. So uh, when you're in racing, you want to do that for sure. So we ride into the middle of nowhere. So it's good to know how to take the bike apart and know what you're looking for. So uh, doing that, installing parts. I got the motor-minded tower still ready to go on. I haven't done it officially uh because i'm trying to get the radiators on there and everything like that so and then right behind that like i said i've got the kit from raid garage coming for the 790 to narrow it up make it a little bit lighter and more aggressive uh and then that tank and the triple clamps to get on there as well so super excited about that we'll see what uh what shakes down on that um but yeah let's see what else we got going on here uh we know abu dhabi challenge coming up uh, we do have some more uh, news coming on the uh, Chasing Waypoints Challenge. We do have the uh, the Adventure Raid stuff that we're going to be doing uh, for the bigger adventure bikes. Uh, for those of you that don't know uh, or haven't seen it or didn't hear the podcast episode yet from last night, that is on your all the YouTube or excuse me, all the podcast channels now. I checked this morning. Uh, so Apple, Google, Spotify. Uh, rocket podcast and there's a bunch of others um, but anyway so that is now live check that out you'll find out a little bit more about it but um, Baja Rally has officially announced that they're going to be doing a adventure sports GPS class so uh, for the bigger bikes adventure bikes side by sides uh, and also safari vehicles uh, you're going to have a chance to participate uh, in the Baja Rally in a non-competitive class uh, you know, I'm sure there'll be plenty of bench racing and gentlemen's bets in there. But anyway, uh, it's it's geared towards uh, getting more people into the sport and then also getting that rally experience uh, in there. Uh, I'm curious to see uh, the big bike routes, the adventure bike routes. Obviously, that's a little bit near and dear to me. Uh, so I want to see how that uh, how that rolls out and maybe get down and, and ride a couple of those routes uh, before the event. So definitely looking forward to that one. Um, but yeah. All right, so let's see here. What do we have going on here? Let's check on the chat. I've been blabbing over here. Excuse me. Let's see here. Okay, 
Rally comms, Dave Black. Yep, we use that last. Yeah, Dave Black. Yes, sir. Yeah, everything. Um, it's crazy, but walking around the shop, I can't. When I was walking around the Rottweiler shop, girlfriend and I were there, and I'm looking at it, and it's like it's crazy because everything is just so clean and organized, and even the disorganized area is like still pretty clean. So it's 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 pretty cool um, to see all of that. And so I was definitely looking at, uh, looking around, checking out the shop and seeing how everything is laid out. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Fabian hard to install. So I already watched the installation video, uh, that Rottweiler, uh, has already filmed for this. And so my biggest thing, like doing the, the triple clamp part of it is actually not that hard. I've already taken it apart. And so basically it's, uh, taking the front wheel off dropping the forks, uh, which is literally eight bolts. Uh, after you get the front wheel off, remove the calipers, drop the forks out, undo the triple clamps, shimmy everything out. And then my biggest thing was what am I going to do with, uh, what are you going to do with the tapered roller bearings or the bearings? And so in the video, he shows how to get the bearing races out of the steering head tube on the frame. So it's actually not that hard. It was just, it was simply done with a, a, a punch and a small hammer and just kind of tapping it and taking your time, taking your time, get both of those out. And then uh, the race from the tapered roller bearing uh, just basically drops in. You do the same thing. I, I, I already kind of know if you want to cheat is uh, do it on a warmer day. So the bike's a little bit warm and then put the bearing race in the freezer for, for an hour to get it to shrink as much as it will. Uh, and then, yeah, just drop it in, tap it in. And then you use the old bearing race to help finish tapping and seating the new one in. And that's it. That was to me in my mind, that was going to be the hardest part. But after watching the video that Rottweiler did on it, I was like, oh, this is cake. So I was, I was excited to see that. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to getting that installed in there. And I, I'm, I was blown away. I'm, I'm actually excited that he included a tool to help line up the forks because that will make a difference on how the fork actually operates, how smooth it is. So if you feel that it's harsh or that it's just doing something weird, that's the first place to check is are my, are my fork legs parallel to each other? Are they running in the right direction? And not scraping. So, uh, let's see. Uh, all right. Dave black best part of my build was definitely the rally tower. Uh, I'm trying to remember your bike. I want to make sure. Yeah, you did. You're running the moto minded tower, I believe on your bike as well. So I, and I, you may or may not put that together in your apartment as far as I remember or condo. Um, but yeah, we won't tell the, the homeowners association. They'll probably generally frowned upon, but whatever. Um, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that was the tower that you were running trying to remember but I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure that's what it is uh okay so then from there uh what do you know about nora jimmy suggested i do that one so the nora rally the nora 1000 known as the happiest race on earth i've heard a lot of great reviews okay yeah so it is mono minded uh i've heard a lot of great reviews about it um as far as uh, the event and how it's organized. Uh, they do basically break it up as a rally and they do have, uh, stages and, and days, you know, it was from this point to this point and that kind of stuff. So I think that it's organized very well in that aspect. It'll be interesting to see this year because years back, they did try and do what they're doing again this year, which is basically everybody on a bike is going rally mode. Um, and there was a mutiny with that because a lot of people, well, they're afraid of road books still, you know, they're, they're not experienced in them. And so they're like, eh, so I'm curious to see how it shakes down for this event. Um, I think it'll, it'll do well. Um, and yeah, Jimmy suggesting that you do it. I think that that's definitely one of those, uh, one of those events that you got to at least try once. And then at the end of the day, it's rally experience, right? You're going to get a whole nother exposure to different types of road books from a different road book creator. Um, you'll get to race in Baja, uh, which is absolutely horrible. I don't know why anybody would ever want to go to Baja to go ride a motorcycle and check out all the cool views. Um, so there's that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I think that that's, uh, you know, I may actually even try and make the, I don't know when the contingency and, uh, technical inspection date is, but, uh, I think I might go check that out. I think that'll be a good thing to do. 
So I'll have to look at the dates, but yeah, maybe we'll see you down there uh, for that one. Or if you're on this side of the planet and you want to, you want to take a tour down there, maybe we can just jump down in the car and go check it out and just hang out down there for the day and see what it's about. I don't know. So maybe we'll do that. But, uh, yeah, so the back to the, uh, the triple clamp should be fairly easy to do it. Uh, Matthew, I know I told you that we talked about it and we were going to do an unboxing, but unfortunately DHL decided that they wanted to further probe into the box. Uh, and not send it to me today. So that's kind of a bummer, but no worries. We'll be on next Wednesday. We'll talk a little bit more about it uh, and do the unboxing then. Uh, and then hopefully we should have some stuff from uh, Raid Garage also in the next uh, week or so. So looking forward to that. But uh, but yeah, so that I think pretty much does it for about tonight. I don't know what else, uh, what else we got going on. I don't have any more boxes to open, uh, thankfully. And uh, yeah, we'll see. So... Don't forget, uh, like, subscribe, share. Um, I should take a second to say that this uh, Waypoint Wednesdays is the new uh, the new chapter uh, in addition to the Chasing Waypoints podcast. Um, and taking a moment to talk about the Chasing Waypoints podcast. This morning, I woke up at you know three fifty four in the morning, one eye open, and uh, the first thing I wanted to check was, did we finally do it? And yes, we finally did it. We had 14,000 plays and 60 plus, I think it was like 62 countries total so far. So it's up another four countries from the last time I checked, which is awesome. Um, And 14,000 plays. So basically 13,000 of those in one year, because last year in February, we hit 1,000 plays and I was excited. And then this year, it's crazy. All of a sudden we're at 14,000. Uh, so the next goal, 20,000, uh, that is going to be the next goal is 20,000 total plays for the chasing waypoints podcast. And then also grow uh, waypoint Wednesdays. So waypoint Wednesdays, I'm trying to do a little bit more technical stuff on here because then, you know, I can show it in front of the camera, uh, and do that kind of stuff. Um, and then do the more interviews and stuff like that on the chasing waypoints podcast. So, uh, hopefully you're subscribed to both the YouTube channel and also subscribe to, uh, the chasing waypoints podcast. So you guys can check that out as well. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I hope everybody is good. I hope everybody's getting ready to ride. It has been super cold here in California. Uh, so I'm thinking we're, uh, we're getting, uh, we're getting hopefully to the spring soon because this is getting horrible. Uh, let's see. And American rally, the originals, great numbers, more rally, the better. Yes, I agree. More rally, the better guys. It's not that bad. So, uh, if you're going to be in the Southern California area at once, I release the information, uh, get down here. We'll do the, uh, we'll do the adventure raid stuff, uh, basically self-guided tour with road books and a little bit of coaching and stuff like that. So I think it'll be cool, uh, for people to, to learn a little bit more about it and what these guys go through Dakar goal is not to make it a super complicated road book just make it easy to read and get guys out uh on the road and exploring the countryside and hopefully i can find some roads you haven't been down uh including one that we may have gotten kicked off uh me and every single sunday maybe can neither confirm nor deny that but yeah so looking forward to it all right with that being said guys it is eight o'clock i gotta be up at 3 30 in the morning so it is time to call it quits for tonight Uh, are you seriously complaining about the weather in SoCal? Well, I did wear shorts to work today. Uh, and it was 42 in the morning when I left. Uh, let's see. Will you be doing any live YouTube coverage for the Baja rally or Sonora rally? Uh, you know, that's a good point, Fabian. If, uh, if I can get a good internet signal, uh, I do actually kind of have a mini setup. I've got a microphone for the uh, behind the scenes camera over here, just off the YouTube camera. Uh, I do have a microphone setup for that and could totally do some stuff remotely. Uh, actually, probably uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot. You know, I can't make any promises because I do. Uh, I've already talked to the guys at Rally Comp uh, and and said, you know, if they needed to help to let me know. So I may be busy doing that, but you know, I'll try and sneak some stuff in. Uh, hopefully I'll be taking my dad with me. Maybe I can get him on the, uh, on the camera duties and he can tape while I do our, do the rally comp thing and maybe ask some questions and stuff. So who knows? Maybe we could do that one. Uh, coming. (laughs) I will go to Georgia. Uh, actually there's a, there's a car I've been looking at in Georgia and apparently everybody that does enclosed trailers, cause that's another thing I've been looking at. Uh, Apparently they all, they're all in Georgia. 
for some reason. So I don't know why. It must be the land is cheap over there or something. I don't know. Or uh, cost effective. We'll go with cost effective. So, so yeah, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, good question, Fabian. Yeah, I'll definitely uh, see if we can get... Uh, we could get some live coverage going, uh, you know, as, again, as internet signal permits uh, and doing that. So on that, uh, let's see, Jacob. Uh, okay, so when's Baja Rally? He's over on the, uh, and Vic Knight, thank you for tuning in. And yes, we do need to ride uh, coming very soon. Oh, uh, if you're still on, I don't know if you've, you're off already, but uh, the Ride On event, Rawhide, April 24th, end of April, uh, get that on the calendar. I'm going to try and make it out to that one. Um, and then from there, uh, Jacob, let's see Baja rally. There's actually three events. Um, there's one in May, there's one in October, which is the main event. And then in December, they've got one more event. Uh, so you've got the San Quintin rally, which is a two, three day event. Uh, you've got the Baja rally six day event, which is October 2nd through the 8th. Um, that's going to be the main event. That's six days. Uh, and then you've got the Catavina rally in December, I believe it's the third through the fifth. So it's, uh, uh, again, another two, three day rally. Uh, so really cool. It's, we've got a series, uh, we've got Kota rally. Uh, I keep forgetting to mention it, but we've got the Nora rally, the Nora 1000. So you've got the Kota Nora, then you've got the Baja rally stuff and you've got Sonora rally stuff. So this is like the first year that we've got a bunch of rally stuff going on here stateside and, and it's, it's the opportunity. So the sport is growing and I'm looking forward to seeing it grow even further, uh, and helping grow, uh, the events even more. So yeah, let's do it. But yeah, if you guys haven't, uh, if you have questions about road books, I'm happy to help with what I do know. Uh, and then, or at least get you pointed in the right direction if there's a question that I don't know the answer to. So, uh, yeah. With that being said, uh, that is a wrap, guys. Thank you for tuning in for Waypoint Wednesdays. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Let's grow this channel. And then also, uh, don't forget, we do have the Chasing Waypoints podcast. You can find that uh, on any of the podcast platforms, Google, YouTube, Spotify, Rocket Podcasts. I don't know. There's a bunch of others, like 20 different, uh, different podcast platforms that are basically re uh re-airing or whatever it is or they're relaying the uh the podcast episodes so it's pretty cool to see so yeah all right that's it let's call it a night we're done see you guys thanks for tuning in